counting is a very important thing that I try to stress in this class. And the reason it's important for us to think about it, well, many of us are going to be future educators. When we teach kids in the elementary school, sometimes people have this conception that counting is something we learn to do in kindergarten, possibly first grade, and then we stop. The reality is we should be learning to count throughout um, all of the elementary years into middle school, possibly into high school, because counting can be very complex. So one of the tools that we must learn once we learn to count our numbers in order, like let's say a kid can successfully count from one to 100, is to learn to count by different values, count by twos, count by fives, count by sevens, and a variety of things. Also to count down as well as count up. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about today is to count on. Now the reason it's very important to count on is because if you're going to add two things together, you could start with one of the numbers numbers and then just add on the other. Let me give you an example. If I ask you to add 15 plus four, and if you're maybe a kindergartner, you might want to get out 15 blocks, count them out and get out four blocks and put them together and count them all again from the start to realize it's 19. A counting on strategy would say like, okay, in my head, I have 15 and I'm going to add four more to that. So I just start the count at 15 and then I count up four more, 16, 17, 18, 19. So that's the counting on strategy. And so um, you wanna be able to count on from any place in the counting sequence, both up and down, and preferably by a numbers other than one, possibly twos, maybe fives, maybe tens. It's a very powerful thing. Let me give you another example. If you had 67 and you added 30 to that, well, you could stack those up, but counting on would sound something like this. Okay, I have 67 in my head. Now I'm going to add 30, which is actually, three tens. So it sounds something like this, 67 in my head, 77, 87, 97, three tens. And so I have my answer. And I can do lots of mathematics successfully with ones and tens if I can add up and, and count up and count down. Another example would be something like this. What if I had 218, take away 50. Well, I might stack those up, but if I wanted to quickly do it in my head, 218 in my head, counting down by tens, keeping track, this is five tens, 218. So taking away 10, 208, think about that one. Next one, 198, 188, 178, 168. And you can just count by tens to get there. Now, that's something you probably would need to practice and you can practice. So we're going to practice counting on, but in other bases. Now we're not going to be very good at it because we haven't counted in other bases. I wanna provide an example in base six or the six one machine. So in base six, we're so unfamiliar with counting, we wouldn't even know how to get started. So if I said something like, okay, here's a number in base six, let's see, four, two, five, base six. What's the next number? Well, you're like four, two, six, that won't work. Um, so it's a little bit of a question. So one thing you can do is you can put the number into the system that we've used. You can do four dots here, four dots here, two dots here, and five dots here. That's four, two, five. Another strategy that I've tried to show you over this module is you could label the place value, the ones place, the sixes place, and then the six times six would be the 36 place. So if you want to do one more or the next number in the count, if you were counting on, you just simply add one more dot and you always add it in the ones place. So if I add one more dot, notice we now have six dots in the one place and maybe you know what happens. I sure do. When you have six dots in base six, right? Six going to one, that would explode and move one dot to the left. And so my number would become four, three, and zero. That would be the next dot, the next number in the sequence, four, three, zero, and then four, three, one and then four, three, two, and so on in base six. I'm not writing the six, but if I were to continue this out, let me put a little separator, four, three, three, four, three, four, four, three, five, or should I say four, three, five, and then it would go four, four, zero. And so when you're counting in a base, it's always important to remember what digits you have. In base six, because that's the example I'm using, we have exactly six digits and the digits are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Now the number system that we normally use is called base 10 and it has dig 10 digits, and digits zero through nine, right? With, with those digits zero through nine, we can write any number we want. And so it's similar in other bases as well. That's a count up.